I'm here. And, uh, you know, uh, I was thinking on the way, I was like, well, you know, this is like the time to talk about grieving when you're grieving, right? But um, what came out of that relationship was, uh, or for me at least, was uh, these talks about love, talking about love. And I want to move this so it's, it feels like it's off. But, um, there's this relationship and um, that is ending. And then the relationship that I have with the larger community and my relationship, whatever we might describe that, with the world. And um, as the song says, what the world needs now is love. And I wanted to sort of tie that in as I aspire to spend my time forward and pretty intentional beginning in January when I was watching and witnessing people harming themselves um, and each other uh, from places of trauma, from places of, tra of pain, from places of fear. Not bad people, but people just like us who are living with the stresses of the world and then our own personal experiences living with uh, grief that um, some have found hard to express, uh, living with anger and frustration. And so just watching that sort of people um, taking that out on each other encouraged me to learn the ways or um, share the ways or my understandings about uh, the possibilities for us to be in, re in right relationship with each other and in re right relationship with ourselves. And I can't remember the exact description. This is new hair, so I'm just like, it looks okay. <laughs> it was like this the other day. <laughs> it's fun. Um, it's It's moving, that's why I'm playing with it. Um, I, I, there, every few years, these questions come up for me. It's kind of odd. I can't really explain it. But um, the question that um, the questions that are repeated from a couple of years ago were, what if we were compassionate with ourselves no matter what? What if we um, what if we loved ourselves anyway? And I have this belief and experience that when I'm loving myself and when I'm kind to myself and when I'm taking on the work to heal myself, I become an easier person to be around. <laughs> I become more loving, more kind, because it all begins within. And I believe my topic said something about, um, something along the lines about how Buddhism, for me, and in 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 the you know coming up with this calling, I want to call it um, to do this particular work. I'm I'm seeing Buddhism as a path towards loving. And I love, so many people have been asking me this question about like, um, uh, because I've been talking about being loving and present and then envisioning the future that we want. And first I'll talk about the loving and how in the Buddhist teachings, we can find, um, well, we can talk about the meta practice where people I know or have seen or experienced have the most trouble with, may I be happy first? May I love myself first? And we kind of overlook that part, overlooking this concept, this idea, this practice of actually loving ourselves first, of actually being kind to ourselves first. And then of course, extending that out to other beings. But if we don't have it, and when we don't have it, we're likely to cause harm to others. 
And then, of course, in his teachings, and, you know, we've, many of us have heard of, you know, people talk about, you know, the great therapist that he has been um, or is. Um, and and yes to they for anybody who's um, beyond the gender binary. Um, these teachings that support us in seeing who we are, where we can grow and showing us ways that we can heal. Noticing, for example, what our hindrances are. Are they fear? Are they doubt? Are they um, uh, many of the other ones? Noticing uh, where we're leaning. Are we leading towards greed? Are we leading towards um, anger? And so once we figure that stuff out, then being able to um, heal ourselves. Are you taking that? Yeah, I was wondering about that. Oh, yeah, now I can see. <laughs> mm. So the question that people have been asking me, because I have this idea that and belief that it's not only about being here now and accepting what is um and of course we accept what is not because we're happy with it but because that is the wisest place for us to decide where we're going to go with what we know what we learn what we discover um but it's also our responsibility to envision and look at a future or envision the future that we want to see, envision the world that we want to see, envision the life that we want to see. And people are like, well, wait a minute, isn't it Buddhism all about being present? And I'm like, yes, of course it is. And if you think that um, metta, if you look at metta, it's about not just this moment, but the next moment and the next moment so that we're present in the next moment with love so that we're present in the next moment, aware of what are um, what the attributes that we're bringing with us. What are the skills? What are the harms that we're experiencing? Um, so yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about love. I brought some books. Um, some pieces that I wanted to read, that I will read some pieces. And let me just take a peek at them. Because I thought it was, I was like sitting down, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have a sandwich and then I'm gonna decide what I'm gonna read tonight. <laughs> uh, so now we just have to take a peek. Yeah, we can begin with this piece, even though I commonly read it before we practice, but this reminder that the practice of mindfulness, the practice of meditation consists of coming back to ourselves in order to restore peace and harmony, coming back here. The energy with which we can do this is the energy of mindfulness. Mindfulness is the kind of energy that carries with it concentration, understanding, and love. If we come back to ourselves to restore peace and harmony, then helping another person will be much a much easier thing. Caring for yourself, reestablishing peace in yourself is the basic condition for helping someone else so that the other can stop being a bomb a source of pain for ourselves and others, you really have to help them to diffuse the bomb. To be able to provide help, we have to have a little calm, a little joy, a little compassion in ourselves. And that's uh, from Thich Nhat Hanh's book, True Love. And so again, beginning with us, um, and I know uh, that, you know, it doesn't matter what um, your perspective is in the larger political scale, nobody is appreciating knowing that there are genocides going on in the world. There always have been, 
but we're waking up to it in a whole different way. And being able to know that, honor that, and know where our hearts are around that so that we can find a place of ease, wise, calm, right? So not that we're in some equanimous place where we're, you know, we're, we don't care, but that we're actually grounded, knowing that there's harm being done, noticing how it's appearing in ourselves so that we're not passing on that harm in different ways to other people. And um, I'm sure I've heard it somewhere. I think I've I've come, the term I've been using is a uh, trauma scrolling so that many of us will spend time just scrolling through social media, looking at all the horror that's happening, all the drama that's happening. And sometimes it's global. And sometimes it's, if you have enough friends on Facebook, there's going to be a few deaths every day from animals and people. And so imagine if we spent the same amount of time we do in the drama and trauma, also in the practice of healing and joy. Because I don't find, I find that that's not necessarily happening for people. That they can take in a lot of news, try to digest it in some uncomfortable way, but then they're not sort of reaching for um, the healing, reaching for um, reaching for things that support them with practices, support them with um, loving themselves and loving others. When you commit, so um, I didn't introduce myself, so I'll, I'm gonna, I'll back up a little bit. Um, my name is Fresh Lev White, and um, I'm like, is it? Uh, I'm thinking of changing my last name. That's a whole different story. Um, <laughs> um, I can imagine lots of reasons why you're laughing. We'll talk about it later. Um, and my pronouns are he, they, and love. And generally, I get a giggle out of that. And I want you to imagine committing to embodying love all day, every day in every situation and imagine what your life might be like. It's work that I can't even begin to name, but it is who I am and who I choose to embody. And you also have the opportunity to choose to be love, to choose to be peace and to choose to be compassion. And then imagine what your life is like from there. Then you come in at, you know, 35 minutes late and you're just smiling because you're like, oh my God, things happen, right? Beating up on yourself a little less, but also you extend your compassion to the quote unquote enemy. The kind of love that King was talking about the kind of you begin to have this experience where I don't like this particular person. I don't like what they're doing. I don't appreciate it, but I know that I love them. I know that I have a compassion because I know that there's an angry child inside who's being, who's not being seen and not being heard. Um, so that's my introduction. But look, we found a dollar. As your self-love grows stronger, so do the waves of change that you can create. So do the waves of change. I'll read it again. As your self-love grows stronger, so do the waves of change that you can create. And this is from the book Inward by Young Pueblo a Buddhist practitioner and poet and author. And one of those steps towards 
being loving and uh, practicing self-love, one of the important aspects of that or practices is also about forgiveness. I'm going to back up a little bit and say that um, uh, every three Fridays or show I or so, I host a show on KPFA, uh, local radio. And on March 1st, I hosted um, a rabbi from my synagogue named uh, Rabbi Dev Noli. And when I asked the rabbi um, and my friend um, what resources they advised for um, for you know the audience right now, for people right now, and their reply was that whatever your practice is, whatever whether your spirituality is or religion is, that you're doing it three times more today, that you're doing it three times more as we move towards the trauma that we know that's coming in November, right? Um, and so we resist our practices because we don't love ourselves. We resist our practices because we have a hard time honoring ourselves, our experience. We resist our practices because we don't think we're worthy. And yet, every inhale confirms that you're supposed to be here. Every time you inhale, life itself is telling you that you are enough. You don't need any other validation. Every time you inhale, you get to begin again. So who are you not to forgive your past? Who are you not to forgive the younger you who didn't know what you know right now? Why? And how would holding them prisoner support you in meeting this moment and the moments that come when we need you individually and your sangha needs you so much? If there's a time when spiritual community is important, the time is now. This piece is called Experience, and it says, as she looked into her past, she noticed that the road she had traveled was no simple straight line. Her journey toward fully loving herself and the world was full of forward and backward movement, twists, turns, detours, and even some pauses. At times, she doubted her progress, her potential, and even her power to change. But today, with the wisdom of experience at hand, she knows she could not have gotten to where she is without every movement that she's ever made. So I understand that some of us might be in a place of feeling really terrible about ourselves, our lives, and our experience. It happens. And you're here. And you get to begin again. And you get to forgive your past. Yeah, um, I want to say one more thing about forgiveness. And I really hope that you'll consider it because it'll help lighten the load. Without a doubt. Oh, there's a, there's a story I'll share. So um, um, 
I'm just going to share a brief version of it. A man comes to where the Buddha is sitting and he sees the Buddha sitting and he spits on the Buddha, um, sort of snubbing him in some way and goes away. And I believe the story is has some conversations with some people, gains a better understanding of what the Buddha is doing and why he's doing what he's doing and comes back the next day and says to the Buddha, um, I'm sorry that I spit on you. And the Buddha's response is, um, why are you sorry? I am not the man I was yesterday, just, so you, you, just as you are not the man you were yesterday, right? The person had already seen the light, woke up, they were not the same person who spit on the Buddha the day before. Your 10, 12, 20, 30, 40, 50 year old self didn't know what you know today. And if there was a time when they needed your holding, when they needed your care and they needed your attention, it's now. And you've carried them this far Trust, you can do it. It's just about listening and you might need help. Help is a good thing. You deserve help. We all deserve help. We all deserve to work in community. But letting that younger one go, and I'm talking about that younger one from just yesterday, letting them go from the chains of guilt, shame, or blame, is going to help sustain you and help make you a, a stronger link for those in your presence. When we begin healing ourselves, it sets off waves that connect us to those who have healed in the past and those who will heal in the future. When we heal ourselves, it gives strength to those who need more support to take on their own personal healing journey. What we do reverberates throughout time and space, like a rock thrown into a lake. The circles it creates move in all directions. And I had a thought, but I was too busy reading it. So I, I love the thought. <laughs> <laughs> so I can be present with the reading. And um, I think I'll just say, you deserve to heal. You have permission to heal. I don't know about you, but I've had to like get permission sometimes from my therapist or my coach to like be kind to myself, take care of myself or heal myself. Anybody with um, any childhood family trauma might know what I'm talking about. It's like... Sometimes we need permission. It doesn't even have to be family trauma. Um, I have no idea what time it is or how much time I have. Uh oh, oh here it's six thirty-two. So we have a couple more minutes. Let's see. See if I can find, I have one more piece I want to read, but let's see if I can find it. Mm. That's just one quote says, suffering is nothing but experience enslaved by ignorance. And that's the Dalai Lama. And when we're holding on and not forgiving ourselves, we're creating suffering. Just want to acknowledge that that you deserve your own love and that you deserve your own care. Okay, um, I don't think these are, oh yeah, I like this one. Let's see, do I wanna save it for next time? I'll redo this one. And so some of this can um, be a uh, metaphor for um, 
the shame, blame, anger, and or the us that we used to be or that we were in those moments that we um, that we caused harm. And Tidnan Han says, we have to learn the art of transforming compost into flowers. Look at a flower. It is beautiful, it is fragrant, it is pure. But if you look deeply, you can already see the compost in the flower. With meditation, you can see that already. If you do not meditate, you will have to wait 10 days to, see, to be able to see that. If you look deeply at the garbage heap with the eye of a meditator, you can see lettuce, tomatoes, and flowers. That is exactly what the gardener sees when he looks at the garbage heap. And that is why he does not throw away his waste materials. A little bit of practice is all you need to be able to transform the garbage heap into compost and the compost into flowers. The same is true of our mental formations, which include flowers like faith, hope, understanding, and love. But there is also waste material like fear and pain. The flower is on its way to becoming refuge, but the refuge is also on its way to becoming a flower. That is the non-duality principle of Buddhism. There is nothing to throw away. So even, you know, we heard in the experience uh, that I read, um, it's not that we forgive and it's gone. It's not that we want to bury, because that just causes all kinds of crazy stuff but that it's 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 part of what makes us like part of everything that ex that we've experienced makes us and um that can be really hard when we live in a place of um what have could have would have been better could have been better what if if only but we're here now it's already happened it's already gone And uh, let's see, I want to leave some time for uh, Q&A. Let's read this last piece. I mean, I have a few last pieces, but I think I'm going to read this one that says, um, the healer, the healer. And I just want to ask you to take a moment and recognize yourself as a healer. that in the various ways that you're healing yourself, you're also helping to heal those around you. And many of us, anybody in a recovery program can, can understand that, can maybe able to see that if you're in that stage. But when we heal ourselves, we become healers as well. The healer you have been looking for is your own courage to know and love yourself completely. The healer you have been looking for is your own courage to know and love yourself completely. The healer that you have been looking for is your own courage to know and love yourself completely. And why don't we pause for a moment and take as much of that in as you can. I know there was a lot there. We'll take just a few minutes and take some of that in. Noticing for yourself what's showing up now. Noticing the sensations in your belly, your heart.
you might notice where you may be experiencing resistance or opening or neutrality. And in this quiet, is there a place in you calling to be loved? Just notice. How can I love myself right now? Where do I need compassion for myself right now? And even if you don't believe it, perhaps you might allow these words I am worthy of my own love. Within e with each inhale, I'm loving myself. I am wor worthy of my own love. And with each inhale, I am loving myself. I love myself and I have compassion for myself no matter what. I love myself, I have compassion for myself no matter what. May I have compassion for all beings, especially my Sangha. May I have compassion for all beings, especially those in my Sangha. May I support the compassion for yourself, my dear Sangha community. May I be a support for your self-compassion, my dear Sangha community. May I love and accept myself no matter what. May I love and accept myself no matter what.
May I love and accept myself no matter what. May I love and accept myself no matter what. Okay, so um, I thought we'd leave a little time for, um, for you to share your wisdom, share any comments, or if you have any questions. I can't see folks online, but I'd say if you're online, you can just start talking. You don't have to raise your hand. And then you just say, excuse me, if the other person stops. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you all feeling? Thank you for that. I I, uh, I was one of those people who was feeling frustrated. And so I just really, I just appreciated the gracefulness with which you acknowledge that that's a thing. And then you didn't need to take it on and punish yourself. And and I feel like that's kind of my mode of operating is that when I do something wrong, I feel like I have to sort of demonstrate how sorry I am and, and um, you know, be all like, you know, subservient and say, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, that kind of thing. And, and I realized from your, you know, as you're talking, it comes to me that um, what would that be like? if I didn't have to do that, if I just was able to acknowledge this thing that happened and that things happened and move on. And so it's just, uh, you know, I really was sort of eye opening to me about the many ways in which I kind of, and the history with which I sort of punish myself for not being the best person that I could be, or that, you know, that my parents thought I could be or, or my culture or whatever. And so, is very um it was just very lovely to hear and to hear the words but also to see them embodied in the way that you uh kind of do that so i appreciate that thanks for sharing and yeah i've been there 
and it's you know I've been there uh, beating myself up you know even a few years back five years ten years I would have just been like you know yeah but uh it wouldn't have changed anything. <laughs> it would just maybe make me less present. So thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. Thank you. Glad you some, um, feel respected. Hi, it's Maddie. As somebody who forgets things a lot, this thing about... Wait, let me lower my own sound. Um, this thing about forgiveness of yourself, the way you came in and had no really super great excuse, but just kind of mixed up the times. That's a typical Maddie. And I wonder what are really the steps? I mean, mantras work, but when you're triggered by feeling like, quote unquote, you should have been better or whatever the voices of the past are telling you, it's hard to restore. Yet somehow you're at the stage now where you can just come in and truthfully say, what is that oh yeah well this trauma sort of happened and then that made me kind of get all confused it's so relatable and so refreshingly honest but what really are the steps to get from a place where you're driving and just wishing all the cars in front of you would disappear so you don't have to disappoint that's the loaded word people and how did you get from where you were where you just described four years ago even though you know the cognitive you knows it's not useful and you're not present, but there is always the trigger and the hijacking. What were the steps to overcome it so that you could arrive today saying, yep, this is what happened, but I love myself. Yeah. Thank, and we could really you. feel it in the room. We could feel it. Thank, thank you. Um, I have the privilege of sitting in this chair and um, so much of my healing um, I used to, I, I've listened over the years to a lot of Louise Hay, you know, Louise Hay, she was a teacher, right? And lots of self-compassion. And in her teaching, she always used you. And I thought, wow, how powerful would it be for me to say I? So in my journey um, in teaching loving kindness or teaching different phrases, I would be in the front of the room, just tears pouring down my face because every time I said I, I was saying I, and it was getting in. So yes to the phrases and the practices. Um, the other part is the practice of self-compassion and, and like really sitting with, um, for example, you know, what you were talking about, like sitting with, okay, so I could get mad at myself. What does that serve? And um, and how's that going to serve whatever I'm going towards or whatever I'm doing? And the other part of really understanding on a deep level that ultimately we're only accountable to ourselves. And it's we that we don't want to disappoint, right? It's we that we don't want to embarrass. At the end of the day, it's the ego that can be a problem. Um, whereas coming in and saying, I absolutely apologize for being late. And I'm smiling because I'm so happy that I'm not mad at myself. Um, I'm just keep practicing every time it comes up for you practice and yes i was in the car going you could be going faster and why'd you make me miss that light but uh, again gently doing so um and then as i told gussie i had a conversation with the area about me parking out front so i'm about six cars down so just like really creating, I, you know, I'm intentionally, whatever that might mean, creating the experience that I want, which is when I come in, I meet people respectfully, kindfully, open hearted, and I'm open to receiving the same. And that also means if somebody was pissed at me, that I could actually sit with that conversation and not take their anger on. So I hope that wasn't too long of a question of a response. But the steps are simply practice. Lev, would you mind if I added something? Not at all. Maddie, I feel inspired to add how much impact it's been for me 
as I take care of myself, like each act of care and kindness toward myself, like sometimes it's clear that's an act of love and sometimes there's this intention to recognize it as an act of love. And sometimes there isn't really a, like an awareness that's an act of love. But every time I take an act of care to myself, a doctor's appointment, brushing my teeth, feeding myself well, getting enough sleep, calling a friend, taking downtime, socializing, whatever. When I take an act of care for myself, it has helped me to value myself more. And that resulting effect has been so much more kindness and love and generosity toward myself and toward everyone has left it so clearly. Like how we, and as Rev Angel likes to say, you know, how we are with anything, it's how we are with everything, right? So any place is an opportunity for this for this practice. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Hi, I'm John. Hi, John. Um, thanks for being here. Um, yeah, I really appreciated this, um, your talk. Um, and I'm also wondering, I guess recently I've had just a really hard time just sitting in general, and I'll do it anyways. Um, but I guess it's just lots of the more the deep, the deeper my practice gets, and then also seeing a therapist and like trying to improve myself, the harder it seems like more things come up. And, um, and I guess I'm also wondering, um, well, I don't really have a meta practice. I do like Anapana and Vipassana. And at the end of that, I'll say, may all beings be well, or may I be well. But sometimes it almost happens and I don't even realize I've said it. Like it's just my practice timer goes off. I say all the things and then I move on. And I'm wondering how I can incorporate a more like deeper, like meta practice mm -hmm. into like my daily um, yeah. practice, I guess. Um, it's not uncommon, right? That we kind of wave in and out and it might even be that you're looking for a different way to practice. So maybe you're standing up maybe you're walking mm -hmm. so that um that can help particularly um the mind can get quote unquote bored and so challenging yourself to practice in different ways might help get you to the cushion and then um yeah and so it sounds like you're not present Mm -hmm. Right. So that might be why you want to try different practices um, so that you're actually pausing and um, saying your merit or offering the meta from a more grounded present experience. But um, yeah, I don't know if that's useful, but I would definitely try to alternative ways of practicing. Yeah. Yeah. Or like and then as far as the meta practice goes, it's really interesting. You can write your own lines, right? And not too gentle. Something like, may I love myself now is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank you. May I love myself as I am. May I accept myself as I am. And would you suggest also like doing that, like just at the end of a practice or just even just dedicating can, an entire practice to you can do it for a whole practice yeah you can listen to a recording of it you can record your own voice um yeah you can i i play with it that's what yeah. i've done cool. um and then of course there's you know tower brock has a site and then there's insight timer but there's all there's lots of offerings for being able to have someone else say those phrases out loud for you. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Be nice to yourself. Yeah. Sometimes we fall off, but the wagon's always there. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I, I do sit every day, but I'm very like, I don't want to, you know, yeah. and I do it anyways. And yeah. I feel like it's almost, well, I've also started meditating because I'm clean and I'm sober a long time. And sometimes it's almost like, okay, I need to do this. So I stay sober for at least 10 to 15 minutes. And right. like, I force myself to do it, even though I'm just like, 
I don't want to be doing this. And then like go and listen to one of the really funny, a, uh, you know, AA talks or one of those talks that helps. Yeah. It helps you come back to the practice. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so cool. much. You're welcome. Oh, we are like almost out of time. Does anybody have a question before we're done? Last minute comment question. Ooh, the bell outside is tolling. Um, all right, shall we offer merit? And thank you all for your kind attention. So um, just allowing ourselves for a moment to come back and be held by the earth and trusting that what you need will travel with you. And we may, we may wish for all beings without exception to be safe and free from suffering. We may choose to accept love, to experience love in all of its glory, and perhaps even consider being love in our day to day. May we and all beings experience and offer compassion throughout our experiences. May all beings be peace, live with ease, and may all beings be free. Thank you all so much for your kind attention and for your practice.